Hello YouTube. Alright, we're going to be rebuilding my main computer today. Something I didn't expect to be doing so soon, but here's the stuff. Now some of you may be asking, why on earth are you rebuilding your main computer when you have a 3770K, the highest tier uh, Ivy Bridge i7, and 16 gigs of RAM and all that stuff already. I mean, obviously I have enough. But I found out about something that Intel has been doing to these pro to their processors for at least a decade that I don't really like. Uh, and it doesn't take away from the performance. They still have excellent performance. Um, it's more of an engineering thing that I'm not a fan of. I'll explain what that is. Every CPU these days has a heat spreader. And what that does is it spreads the heat more evenly across the uh, surface of the CPU so that you can put a bigger cooler on it and so that it basically cools it better. To underneath that uh, heat spreader is the die of the CPU, as shown in this picture here. That's what it looks like. So there, are, so there are two ways of of connecting the heat spreader and the die together, so that you spread, so that the heat can transfer between the two. The first method is fluxless solder. You can they literally at the factory level can solder the two together. Uh, so that you have a very permanent and high quality connection between the two that in my mind using my common sense and my knowledge of solder probably transfers heat a lot better than the uh, next method I'm about to tell you about which is when they use something called TIM thermal, thermal interface material which is a fancy name for just thermal paste like you'd find in a syringe like this they literally put that underneath the heat spreader to connect the die and the uh, the heat spreader together and in my mind that's not an amazing engineering choice because see, because grease like this does not last forever and in my mind that's not top tier build quality for a top tier processor I'm not a huge fan of that that's not to take away from the performance of this processor it gets very good performance uh, for what it is because the architecture is fantastic Intel is on top as far as architecture right now but the build quality for me just isn't there. Um, to get the solder, you need to get very, very, very high-end extreme processors, like like Core i7 extreme processors. Even some of the Xeons use thermal paste underneath the heat spreader, which is ridiculous in my mind. Uh, it's probably cheaper than using solder, but it's not. It, it it doesn't live up to my standards of build quality. That's not to take away from anybody else, but me personally, that's that's my opinion. So what am I doing? I'm building an AMD build because I found out that AMD still uses solder to connect the heat spreader with the CPU still and in my mind that's higher build quality. Despite losing performance by getting this over keeping the Core i7, you know I lose that but I don't push my computer all that hard so it's not really that big of a deal. I mean, if if it's if I really don't get the performance I need, I can get an FX eighty three fifty, and I will do just fine with that. But I think this one will work just fine. And this is a sacrifice I'm willing to make for for more than one reason. Main for that, um, just for my silly reasons of the build quality and what a sucker I am for that. But also because selling this processor will fund the entire build by itself. This processor is one of the best investments I've ever made for that reason. These these hold their value like glue, which is pretty awesome. So, there you have it. Uh, not only that, but the motherboard I got here has much better I.O. than the Intel one I have. This, just to refresh your memory, this is the Intel motherboard I have. It's a Z68P DS3, which is a pretty, which is a pretty good board. It just doesn't have the I.O. that I prefer. It doesn't have FireWire built in and, you know, other stuff like that. This does. And it's the same price. This board was $100 two years ago. This board is $100 now and has the same, and it pretty much has the same I.O. as the 990 FXA board I used to have for that Phenom 2 6 core processor. And that price for the I.O. you get is just phenomenal. So it just does my money well, actually, to upgrade my system a little bit to the build that I want it to be while maybe sacrificing some performance. Because I can always upgrade that down the road, but I don't think I'll have to. So, rambling aside, let's get to the actual build. Here's what we have. We have a Gigabyte 970A UD3. 
Uh, it's very similar to the 990FXA UD3 board that I had uh, about a year ago, I think. It uh, it has the same I.O. pretty much, so it has built-in FireWire. It has all the good stuff. I'll show you that once we uh, unbox it. Um, I also got this AMD FX series processor, an AMD FX 6300, 6-core six processor, 3.5 gigahertz, 4.1 or 4.2 turbo, and 14 megs of, ca of uh, onboard cache. The reason I went for the 6300 over the 6350 or the 8350 or 80... 320 or any of the higher end CPUs like that so that it would more closely match this even though it really couldn't is because just like the APU build I did I kind of wanted to get the best performance while using as little power as possible this is the highest um this is the highest performance processor I could find in the FX series that was still 95 watt and in my mind that's the best balance of power and performance I could find anywhere so I'm very happy with that plus the Core i7 was a 70 this is a 77 watt processor this is a 95 watt processor so I tried not to up it up the wattage too much so that it doesn't you know use a isn't such a power hog you know what I mean so that's what I did there and of course the cooler we're going to use is my trusty old Hyper 212 Plus. Very old version of this cooler, I might add. So that's the build we're going to do. We're going to redo the main computer with this hardware, and that'll be that. So let's take a look at the motherboard. Move all this stuff out of the way. Mm, that new motherboard smell. Get your manuals, all that stuff. Some pretty black SATA cables. A uh, gigabyte sticker there. IO shield. Really nice colored IO shield too. Alright, let's take a look at the board itself. Let me get it out of here. Here is the motherboard itself. She's a beauty. Not a black beauty like the, F like the 990 FXA one was, but it's still a beauty. Very similar I.O. to that board I had in the past. It has, uh, I'll show you what it has here. Get PS2, USB, optical audio, Firewire, more USB, more USB, USB 3, more USB, Ethernet, and you get uh, pretty high-end Realtek surround sound chipset there. Uh, I'm only going to be using stereo anyway, just like with the other ones, so it's really not that big a deal to have all that, as long as it sounds good. But it has a Realtek chipset, so it will. It pretty much has the same I.O. as the uh, 990FXA one does. It even has a uh, serial header down there, TPM. Uh, it looks like it has, fi oh, it has a FireWire header as well. Excellent, 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 because I have a port for that in the front of my case. USB, you get USB there, and you get the USB with extra power in it. A USB 3 header, so that's actually new compared to the other board I had. So if I get upgrade cases, I can use that, or use that for a card reader or something. Nicely labeled and colored uh, front panel stuff. One thing I really like about these, these uh, Ultra Durable Gigabyte boards is they have really nice heat sinks on them. I mean, these are just nice. This this one on the 990FXA would wobble a lot, but uh, these heat sinks are really nice. They cool the chips off really well. Get four RAM slots. There's the AM3 Plus socket in black. Get six SATA ports just like my old one. So it's not a huge change from my old board, but the I.O. I get on the back is just much better. I like having FireWire built in. I like having a FireWire header on the board. I haven't had that since one of the old Asus 939 boards I had in the past. Uh, and I got the USB 3 header. So it's a more modern motherboard than my other one, which is nice. Plus, I get, um, you know, all the bells and whistles that I used to have on that other board. Uh, it still has two PCI slots, which I appreciate. So I can use older hardware in that if I wish. has SATA 6 gig per second if I ever decide to use an SSD one day. And there you have it. It's a nice board. <laughs> Not much else to say. It's a nice board. <laughs> Let's take a look at the CPU itself. Curious to see what heatsink it comes with. Alright, I've unlocked that. Or undone that. Oh, wow. I can already see the crap.
got a little booklet, you get the CPU itself, you get an AMD FX Unlock sticker, which makes your computer look badass if you like case badges. I personally don't, but that's just me. There's your CPU right there. There you have it. And this, yet another pathetic heatsink. You know, AMD, it would pay to give nicer heat sinks with your CPUs because these are pathetic. This is the one downside to AMD. Uh, they give you really crappy heat sinks for processors that run hot. So, for if you want a decent performance of any kind out of an AMD CPU, temperature wise, I mean, um, you're better off getting third party cooling solutions like the Hyper 212 Plus. This thing, these things are like 30 bucks. It's totally worth it to get one of those. So, I mean, that, that applies to any chip, I think. You just don't want to use the stock cooler on any CPU, no matter who makes it. So, there you have it, folks. I'm going to put all this in the case and put it together, and then I'll show you the end result. All right, she's all put together. Just to recap what's in this machine, I have a Seasonic 520-watt power supply. This thing's been going strong for two years, no problem. Uh, this is the motherboard and everything installed. I don't have my FireWire card anymore because I don't need it. Since there's a FireWire header on the board, and there is FireWire on the back here. Let's just take a look at the I.O. there. There you go. There's the FireWire port right there. But yeah, it's all installed. Looks like it fits really well. This is going to be nice. Cooler clears that RAM because it's the uh, low-profile Vengeance stuff. Uh, I haven't plugged any of the other hard drives in yet. This is my main computer. All the videos I make for you guys are on one of these drives. So, there you go. Alright. Uh, I did notice one thing. Just like the APU build, this board has uh, an 8X slot that's only populated for 4X. So, I guess that's common on these sort of mid-range boards that you don't get the full the full populated port. But on the, uh, the FX than 990 FXA boards you do. There's my graphics card. It's a GTX 550 Ti with 2 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, despite how uh, low end of a gaming card this is, it runs all the games that I play just fine. It runs DayZ just fine. It runs, you know, mostly everything I play fine. Uh, don't ask me how Skyrim or any of that, or Crisis or any of that performs because I haven't tried it on here yet. Uh, but it, it performs extremely well. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm such a rebel using an Nvidia card and an AMD motherboard. <laughs> but that's how, again, that's how I started actually. I started out using Nvidia cards and AMD motherboards and I don't see why I shouldn't continue to do that cuz I like Nvidia's cards. But yeah, I got the Hyper 212 on there. Just fine, nice and snug. And yeah, there you go. It uses real mounting hardware that's not just cheap plastic pins unlike uh Intel's stock stuff, which is nice. But then again, this is this cooler you can use on Intel as well. So, there you have it. I don't need the... F the one thing I don't have in the system anymore is this FireWire card. I don't need that anymore since uh, FireWire is built into the motherboard now. So I can use those PCI slots for other things and other legacy hardware if I want to. Like sound cards and things like that. So that'd be nice. Anyway, this thing's all put together. Now all it's really left to do is install Windows, put all my stuff back on my drive, and uh, get it rolling. So once I start, once I get this thing all set up, I'll show you the uh, the scores, uh, the Windows Experience Index scores, and all the stuff like that. So this is just a good overview of the build, and we'll see what the scores are once I get everything installed and all that stuff. So there you have it, folks. Let's uh, let's get this thing going. Alright, so I got the computer up and running, but I'm having a small problem with it. Uh, and it concerns the graphics card, my NVIDIA GTX 550 Ti. Uh, this board doesn't like newer NVIDIA cards, it seems. Uh, I don't know, I think it's a chipset incompatibility, I'm not sure. Because I've read reviews on this board where people are using GTX 670s. But maybe they are ignoring the same problem I'm having, I have no idea. But... I'll show you what happens. First, let me shut the computer off. Now, the long and short of this, basically, is that it doesn't seem to be able to switch video modes 
on these newer NVIDIA cards by itself. It needs the Windows driver to do it. Uh, and I'll demonstrate that. Basically what happens is you boot the machine up uh, on a cold boot and it works fine. You know, you can get to the BIOS, it shows you starting Windows, then it loads the driver and it all works fine. But if you restart the machine, you know, just hit restart or you go into the BIOS to change something and you hit, you save and exit, uh, you don't see video again until the driver in Windows or Linux or whatever you're using loads. So, turn the computer on. Spin up that one huge Hitachi drive. So you can get to the BIOS just fine. You see all that. It rebooted for some reason. And you can see after it posts, it doesn't show video until the driver loads. Just wait for Windows to load. You can see it loading there off that um, hard drive indicator. It's loading Windows, but it's not switching into the 2D mode. And I don't know if this is a weird bug with the legacy mode of the UEFI BIOS or what, but it doesn't like my newer NVIDIA cards. Until it loads, until Windows loads the driver, you don't get anything. See, so there you go. The monitor uh, light just turned off. See, it, it, you have to wait for the driver to load to get anything, and that that's very strange. So, my solution to that is to try another card. I think personally, it's probably a BIOS or chipset incompatibility. So, what I did is I bought myself. A Radeon HD 7850. One gig of RAM, 256 bit. It has less RAM than the 550 Ti does. But I, I, I hope to God this works because I don't want to have to return this motherboard. So I'm going to stick this card in there and see what happens. Hopefully, this fixes the problem. Uh, if not, then pfft, looks like I'll be returning a board and getting another one. So let's install this and see what happens. Here's a better look at the card itself. It's built really well. It's built really solid. But that heat sink down there does not look that great. And neither does the fan. So hopefully that is not that big a deal. It looks like it has the same mounts as an 8800 GT. So I might be able to stick another my uh, other cooler on there if this is a problem. It uses one PCIe connector, which is, I'm surprised of. So... Well, I've read reviews and people have had the fans die on these cards and other stupid stuff happens, so hopefully I get lucky and get a good card here. But here's some of the I.O. I get on the back. I get a fancy vent that says XFX on it, two DVI ports, both that support uh, the analog converters, HDMI, looks like mini display port, so it has a pretty good I.O. on it, and it's and it has higher memory bandwidth than the 550Ti. The 550Ti is 192 bit. This is 256 bit. So, even though I lose, even though I lose a gig of RAM, I gain a bit in uh, uh, memory bandwidth, and the memory bandwidth does make a big difference in some games' performance. So, this is definitely an upgrade if I end up keeping this. So, hopefully, it fixes my problem with this thing. Uh, we'll find out. I, I personally think it's either a chipset or a BIOS incompatibility. So I'm going to uninstall the NVIDIA stuff here, and we shall get this rolling. So there we go. I've also heard reports that these cards get, pr uh, sometimes the fans go out and they get loud, and sometimes uh, they get hot. So some people are reporting them getting too hot, some people aren't. It, it's weird, but either way, I've turned the fans up in my case to their medium speed. I have those Antec... Uh, three speed ball bearing fans in there with the blue LEDs. Not that the blue LEDs actually matter, but mm. you know, there you have it. Oh yeah, DAT resolution. <laughs> Alright, so let's shut the machine off and get going. One thing that's really nice about newer graphics cards is they're about the same size. Check that out. Same size as the 550 Ti, so there's no space constraints in the case anymore. 
This is a really nice card, so I might not give this up, but this card will have to do. So let's stick that in there and try it out. That card looks pretty badass in there. Check that out. Ah, oh, yeah. That's nice. All right, let's give this a try. It will show up the first time, I know that much. Let's wait for that old Hitachi drive to spin up. <laughs> Gigabyte, there you go. Did it fix it? It did. Yep. Yep, that fixed the problem completely. So I guess there's a chipset incompatibility with these with with newer Nvidia cards on these AMD boards. I have a 970 chipset, so I guess there's chipset incompatibility still. I thought they fixed that in later revisions. I guess not. Well, it gave me an excuse to upgrade my graphics card, so that's okay by me. And I'm that, to me this is okay because it's not the motherboard. So you know there you have it. So. You guys may ask me, what do I like better? Do I like NVIDIA or do I like AMD better? Traditionally, I've liked NVIDIA better because the drivers have been better over time. And it's, what, and it's also what I started out with. My first, in my first ever computer build, I had, a, I think it was a 6800. Yeah, it was a 6800. Then I got a 7600 GT. Used that for about four years. Then I got a GT240. Then I got the, the 8800 and 9600 GT. Then I got the GTS250. Then I got one of these, and now I have this AMD card. So, I haven't really used AMD cards all that much in the past, so... The performance should be better than this one, just because of the specs. I mean, honestly, the only real difference between the two... And I've noticed that uh, AMD's drivers in the past used to be really bad, uh, back in the ATI days, but... I th I, from what I've been told, nowadays, the drivers have gotten a lot better since AMD took over ATI. So, hopefully, uh, the drivers play well with this card, because the drivers uh, between different cards act differently. So, pff, you know. Anyway, I'm glad that solves the problem. So let me get these drivers installed, and then I'll show you the Windows Experience Index stuff. So people were reporting this thing running hot. Well, at idle the graphics card that is at idle it's 36 degrees celsius so it's working fine <laughs> so there you have it let's go to here and show you uh... this check it out an amd fx 6300 6 core processor 16 gigs of ram 3.5 gigahertz it has a 4.1 or 4.2 gigahertz turbo though so here you have it Let's do this real quick. Alright, that's finished now. Now the first glaring thing you'll see is the CPU performance went down big time because I've downgraded uh, the tier of CPU I'm using. Now I'm using sort of a mid-range CPU. It's a 6 core. Uh, yeah, that's a big downgrade and this is why a lot, a lot of you guys will probably think I'm an idiot for downloading from, or downloading, downgrading from an i7. The truth is that I don't push my computer all that hard. The only thing that took huge advantage of the i7 was uh, exporting video, to be honest with you. So, if I can survive just fine on a Q6600, this will be, be just fine, like, honestly. Uh, I'm a pretty minimalist person, so this is okay. I mean, if it's really that big of a drop in performance, practical performance, I mean, not just what the score says, uh, then I'll probably upgrade to an 8350 down the road, but this will do fine for now. And probably do well for quite a while in the future. Memory's at 7.4. The graphics are now at a 7.9. Holy crap! <laughs> that 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 thing craps all over the uh, 550 Ti. That uh, 7850 hard drives at a 5.9 as usual. So there you have it. That's the new build. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it so far. The only the only really. Uh, the only real issue I had was with the video card, was that video card situation, so now that's fixed. 
uh, I think this build will go, will be pretty darn good. So, yeah, rebuilding my main computer. It's a it's a step down in CPU power, but it's a step up in I/O and a step up. It's a, just a much more modern motherboard, and I really wanted a more modern motherboard, so that really helps. Plus, AMD using solder on their heat spreaders really helps as well. So, sweet stuff. That's the new build, and uh, yeah. Hope you enjoyed the video, guys. Have a good one, everybody. Ciao.